So I'm here with Terry Tree in the Deep Space Habitat. Terry, how are you doing today? Doing well, Heather. How are you? I'm great, thank you. So we're talking to students all about the hardware that we have out here at Desert Rats, and this is a fantastic piece of equipment. Can you tell me where we are? Yeah, we're inside of the Habitat Demonstration Unit, configured as a Deep Space Habitat. And what's happening behind us? Oh, uh, we have a loft this year upstairs, and our lift is coming down. We have a crew member coming down, and uh, that's how we get up and down from the lower deck to the upper deck. That's really cool. So the second story of the Deep Space Hab is new for DRATS 2011. And I hear that students were actually involved in that design. That's right. Students designed the law. There was a competition that went on among three universities. And the University of Wisconsin at Madison won. All right. And we're using their loft this year, and we have their students here. This that year. is so exciting to have that involvement between our NASA engineers, scientists, and universities. That's oh, great. You bet. We we get we all gain a lot from that. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about why we would need a habitat like this for future exploration missions. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. If we go to some place like an asteroid, it's going to take a while to get there. Mm -hmm. So we can't just go there in a really small capsule. We need a habitat that's large enough for a crew to be able to live in it during a long time uh, on the way there and on the way back. So it sounds like that's very important, obviously, to have that kind of equipment along with us. We wouldn't want to just send them to a place and not have a place for them to stay and live. Absolutely. So what specific things are we testing out this year for DRATS 2011? Okay. Yeah, this year we, we've upgraded the interior a bit we, to our uh, configuration that we had last year. We added a telerobotics workstation in the back so the crew can actually operate robots remotely from inside here. We also added, of course, the loft for, for basic place to sleep and eat mm -hmm. and hang out. And uh, to the back of us, we added a hygiene module where the crew can uh, get ready in the morning and clean themselves up and even go to the bathroom. So we're taking one of the crews and they're going to be having three successive nights of staying overnight in the deep space hab. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be upstairs sleeping in the elevated compartments where they sleep. And what are we looking at over this three-day period? What are we testing? We're testing a lot of different things. There's a lot of habitability that now we can assess fully with, with a place to sleep, a place to eat, a place to wash up, that sort of things that we couldn't do last year, as well as how well all the workstations functioned with the tasks the crews need to perform. Very cool. Well. I know that students are very excited about learning more about the Deep Space Habitat, but what words of advice would you have for any students that might be interested in working with your team or Habitat teams of the future? Ah, well that's a good question. There's a whole variety of people uh, with different educational backgrounds that work on this project. Primarily engineers, but also architects mm -hmm. and uh, other scientists, computer scientists. Really within the engineering disciplines, we have mechanical, aerospace, electrical, whole wide variety of folks. So can. lots of careers to choose from. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of careers that are needed for this kind of design and development. That's right. There's so many different disciplines that go into this kind of an integrated vehicle that we really need a lot of different people out there with different skills to help us develop these uh, tools. Very good. Well, thank you so much for the time, Terry, and good luck with the test. It's good talking to you. Thank you very much, Heather. Good talking to you.